Okay, all right. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be making a simple robot in the May 28th build of Robot Rumble 2. Um, I might make a more complex robot tutorial uh, later, but today we are just going to be building a simple wedge robot. Um, I don't want to build anything too complex, so well, I might make tutorials on flippers or and spinners, but I, today I just want to focus on making a robot that works. So first you go into workshop, and then there's this little button down here, uh, new robot on that. Right? Robot lab, create a new custom robot, and let's build. Alright, to rotate the camera, you hold down shift and you move the mouse. So you can rotate and stuff, and it's really cool. You can zoom in with um, your scroll wheel. Um, but yeah, you'll see me do this a lot. So basically, hold shift and rotate your mouse. And you can uh, edit your angle. Another cool trick is, if you want to like see under the robot and stuff, you can remove this workbench but uh, by pressing B. But for the sake of everything now, we'll leave the workbench there. So you create, you click create new chassis shape. So you want to angle to where this power drill here is facing in front of you. That's going to be the, where the front of your robot is leading. So to place a point on the grid, you click down on any one of these uh, different snap points that uh, highlights green. So say if I click this one, it'll bond. And I can move the second point anywhere on the grid. Now, I only have to um, click the point. I don't have to hold anything now. I just have to click, place, and move. Now, you can remove points by right-clicking on a point that's already placed. So, you go to it and you click on it, and it, uh, it disappears. Or, you could do, say, say you messed up there, you can rapidly right-click and it'll delete all the points. So, since this is going to be a simple wedge robot, we're just going to make a rectangle. It's a little long, but, you know, whatever. So, circle it, look at it, looks good. Then you press plus. Now, this is where, you, this is where the fun comes in. You can add layers. Um, so, like, say I wanted to make it have, like, an end that kind of bows out. I could lower this down to a very thin height and push these nodes out. You just click and hold them. And that puts that out there. And you can click this. I can lower that down. Then click this. And you can move those points back to where they were. And boom, we have our chassis. So it's got this nice, nice little rounded back in here. Um, looks good. So you click check when you're done. Um, if you want to go back, you press this little back arrow to refresh and delete the chassis. I believe you press this button. Yes. Okay, so you press that button, that button and then you press yes. Um, you can click no to just discard it as well. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, one just backs you out, the X backs you out, this just refreshes your chassis, um, and allows you to make something new. But anyways, press, uh, go, and you can choose from different, uh, collision generation options. Uh, for more complex chassis, this will come in handy, um, because collision is, it can be kind of, a uh, tedious sometimes, but we'll stick with convex for now. And that's just kind of, it's the simple mesh layer. Um, easy collision. It's good if you're making just a robot that's just a box. So, the first thing we're going to have to focus on is the drive. So, you're going to grab any one of these motors. So, my motor of choice for making a robot like this are the Amplo A28 for, uh, oh, that's not the right motor. The Amplo A28 400 uh, single motors. These are really handy when it comes to drive. Uh, also, I'd recommend, if you're going to do move snap, I, I'd recommend it to set, to set it to 0 .005. Um, it allows for a lot more precise movement. It's a little bit smoother, so you'll have to get used to it. 
but it, it allows for a lot more precise movements. Another cool thing is you, cl is you click on mirror, and it'll mirror your component on the other side of the robot. So that's what I'm going to do there. Into place component, well, you click, move where, where you want it, click again, and then you're free. So, I already did those with our main motors. Let's move this over here. Ah, yes, these. So when you click on something, you can move it around uh, with these little arrows here, up, down, side to side, front to back, stuff like that. Um, you can rotate uh, by clicking this little R on the side here. So if I want to rotate my motors like this, I wanted to bring them up like this. Easy, simple, awesome. Move them inwards. Actually, we don't have to move them inwards. Um, for drive setups, I use a lot of gearboxes attached to chain motors. Wait, not chain motors, just chains. Um, so what you got to do is you got to click, um, for these motors, I'd use a gearbox medium. And it's only got one axis of movement in and out of the motor shaft. So I move it all the way back into the motor shaft, take the motor, move it all the way back. into, oh, whoops, into the robot, all right, and then you attach a chain transmission, which is one of these, and you see this one has multiple axis of movements, because it can do this, it's a chain, you can move it about, P pretty cool, pretty cool, so I'm going to move it over here for now, um, and I'm going to adjust, move that up a bit. I'm going to move it inwards. There we go. So only the little tips are showing. It's good if you want to make a really clean looking robot. So, cool trick. So if you want to just make another motor, that's the same type of motor as this one, you press this little icon up here. It moves the single part. Pretty cool. But we're not going to be doing that. So I want, say I want to create an entirely new drive setup that's exactly like this one. So what I do is I press this button here. It's got the two boxes, arrow, and then the two boxes. And I can duplicate the entire drive setup. Very nice. Move it around. Flip it over. Move it over here. And I'm going to be showing, um, well, eh, well, we won't do that trick this tutorial. It's a pretty handy trick that I use a lot, but it takes some precision, or else it just doesn't work at all. So, we're going to move the motors close to each other. Take this, move it right there. Looks good. Very nice. So. You've got your drive motors, and you've got your uh, drivetrain set up. Pretty simple. Easy. Next comes the power part. So you want your robot to move. Um, so you're going to be grabbing... I use 25.9 um, volts uh, pro batteries. Um, these are really good for just your stip just your typical robot, and I'm going to be using six of them. So, in May 28th, the last thing you want are your batteries sitting on your base like this. So, move them up to about the middle of the robot here. So, they're like so. See? Pretty cool. So it, it so like if a robot with a spinner gets under, it'll make it harder for them to hit because there's kind of a little bug where, well, it's not a bug; it's more just kind of a damage thing, where a spinner can kind of clip through the bottom plate of your robot and hit your and hit your battery if it's like really close to the base. So you don't want that to happen. So you got six batteries, pretty nice. Next, we are going to put in. Oh, that one's off center. There we go. Next, we're going to be putting putting in our drive ESCs. Well, first, let's uncheck mirror mode, grab an RC receiver. Put it 
right there. Move it up, and leave it. This is what basically, basically the brain of your robot. This is what's going to be controlling everything. So, we're going to be grabbing, oh, nope, not those. I usually use uh, these dual, mo dual motor ACs, the 160As. Um, they've helped me on a lot of occasions. They're pretty simple, really easy to use. I quite like them. Uh, and I usually grab two of them when making a four-wheel drive robot. Pick them up, move them back, boom. Got them right there. So, oh, I did not intend to click on that. So you got basically the entire guts of your robot, it seems, but you there's still more things that you have to do. So this is battery drain. Um, basically, the batteries run into juice after a certain while. I learned that the hard way. So what you're going to want to do is you want to is you're going to want to grab one of these or two of these if you have mirror mode and place them. Move them up. These are your battery splitters. These will allow you to have um, more amp hours. So basically, it'll allow your robot to run a lot longer. And we have six batteries. We should be pretty good. So, time to add wheels onto the robot. Now, you do have a, have a selection of um, stock wheels. We're going, to be, we're, we're going to be using those. And, I, and usually, I stack maybe two or three of them on top of each other. Looks pretty good. All right. You want to move those wheels in and make it look cleaner. Um, click uh, continuous dynamic collision detection. And that makes your robot drive a lot smoother. Without this checked, um, your robot won't... Um, won't drive as smooth. And you're, and you're going to want to do that for your wheels. So it's going to be this little tick box down here. Now see, since these wheels are mirrored, it automatically copies over to that one. So these copy over to this and vice versa. Um, but if your, if, your rears, bleh, if your wheels are not mirrored, um, you're going to want to have, you're going to want to uh, enable them on this one too. So yeah, once you see this little check, you're good. So looks like, looks like we're doing good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the base, all the internals and stuff of your robot. Time to make it out of material. It won't, it can't do just blueprint. So we're going to make this completely out of steel. See how the weight went up really high there. And we're going to make it out of six thickness. Pretty cool. So our robots can be pretty sturdy. All right. Next, we're going to add the wedge. So, there are, in the extras tab, in the extras music, there are little hinges that you can grab, depending on what type of wedge you want. Um, for this one, we are going to be use, using the bracket hinge wide. It's going to be a flat hinge. Um, it's going to have a big old wedge sticking off the end. All right, looks good. So next, we are going to grab this little icon here and the shapes. Un well, you can grab them on either under weapons or or under extras. They're always going to be under shapes. So either tab, it doesn't matter. So. You're going to grab one of these, put it on the wedge, or sorry, the, the hinge. Going to... Oh, and by the way, there's this S tool. So you click that, and you can change the... Um, the, uh, the dimensions of your shape. So I want this to be long, so I grab the green arrow, and I pull it. And I pull that. And say I want the wedge to be further in so it's not sticking out so far. I move it on top of the hinge, and it's concealed. Pretty cool. And I'm going to make this wedge out of steel. 
But you see, I'm overweight now. I'm very overweight. So, you're going to want to uh, make something a bit lighter. So, for example, we're going to make this wedge a bit lighter. Um, it's not going to be as wide. Move it down. Put there. It's still overweight. So, make this out of titanium. Uh, the bottom plate, make it out of titanium. Make it a... Uh, actually, for chassis spots like this, where you make a chassis, you can make it out of HDPE and get away just fine. It, oh, but only if you have your components like put up in the robot. And boom, you have your basic robot. Now if you want to make it look pretty, we'll make it red. Set for all sides. And we'll have the wedge be blue. Nice. You have your first robot. We are going to be naming this robot Wedge Lord. Alright. Looks good. Oh wait, I forgot about something. So, gearing. Gearing is very important. So, you never want to leave these geared down to just 1-1. One, one. If you're going to do this particular drive setup, I recommend setting this 10-1. Makes your robot a lot faster. Now, time for kind of the hard part. Wiring. So, this is your RC receiver. You can, to order this out, you're going to want to move this to the top. Get your two drive motors on that side. Move those, kind of like that. Take your batteries, move them like so. Take a battery hub, put it like that. Take the ESA, put it like that, and do the same for the other side. This isn't mandatory, it's just very easy um, if you want to um, sort. And you just grab the little node. And you drag it, and you place it. And that's all you have to do. And, and notice I'm linking these two batteries. Um, that's called uh, adding a series battery. Um, if you're filtering them into a battery hub, uh, and you only have like a two port, just put them together like this, battery and series battery. Um, it also, I, I think it puts more power in but don't quote me on that um i'm definitely not an expert at this game but i'm i know enough about it to make a tutorial on this <laughs> um to make a starter robot so link these channels so this is going to be your um your right drive side and also do your left drive side so basically do everything you just saw me do link it up it up there and it doesn't matter if your second battery uh if your battery hub if it doesn't matter if this little second port isn't attached to anything that's uh that's fine so channel one is attached channel one and two are attached to the left side so i'm going to sit switch them to left motor input and on the contrary right motor input for the right side let's go out to testing oh that's a bit of a problem our robot drives backwards so to fix this problem, you click reverse direction on each motor, and boom, your robot drives fine now. Easy. The learning curve isn't as hard as people think. Um, once you get out the basics, you're pretty good from there. So yeah, if you're following along with this tutorial, congratulations, you have made your first wedge robot. Oh, huh, that's a little funny. So yeah, hope uh, you enjoyed this little tutorial here. Uh, probably be making more tutorials in the future. So yeah, that's about it. See ya.